permission now Hello guys, the pattern I'm going to be tying is a airhead, originally designed by Gary Lafontaine. I've tweaked it to suit my uh, fishing style. I'm using it as a caddis adult um, instead of a stonefly adult, um, which is the original intention of, for which the pattern was designed. Uh, it's for a, the very large caddis adult that hatches on the Val River. It's called Macrostemum capensa. Um, the wingspan of this um, adult puts it in the size 10 to almost 8 um, hook length range um, and I find this pattern very effective at dusk when it starts getting dark because at that time of the day when you're really um, chasing down rising fish you cannot um, nurse your fly and, and ensure that and it stays dry which um, the foam is very helpful for so you know that your fl uh, fly is floating and also the big profile of the foam creates a, um, a profile that is, looks like a spent caddis and draws fish up to the surface. The pattern also works very well during the day if you do um, dry and dropper searching for, for fish. Um, because of the profile it draws fish up to the surface. And similar to um, uh, stonefly hatches in America, yellowfish tend to almost have a, like a hangover uh, during these hatches where they get so accustomed to the silhouette and knowing that there's big um, morsels floating overhead that you might even have free rising fish during the course of the day while you're fishing dry and dropper. Guys, the pattern um, that we tie now is um, a dry fly. And as far as dry flies are, uh, are concerned, this is a, a quite a big pattern. It's not very complicated. The two major ingredients that I feel that makes this fly successful is the packaging foam that is almost translucent so it looks like spent wings and it ensures flotation um, when you are not unable to um, nurse your fly or add floating to your fly uh, in the evenings. The second ingredient that I feel is very important is the CDC which gives the fly movement and life and um, imitates the legs and the antenna of the spent caddis. So let's get cracking with the hook. The hook is a size 10 uh, standard dry fly hook. On the, on the hook shank, if the hook shank is um, a little bit longer, you can just tie short. The, even though the fly is quite, um, quite long in terms of its uh, wingspan, the body is quite short. And we're tying it, I'm trying to keep that proportion in mind when I'm tying the fly. So I'm starting um, down with a thread base. The thread I'm using is obviously the, probably the most popular thread at the moment, which is Nano Silk. Uh, makes fly tying much easier. It has some drawbacks, but for this pattern, it's ideal. Um, and we're going to start off with a with a tail with a, a tail butt on this fly. So this dry fly doesn't have an actual uh, long tail to support um, the um, the hook bend, and also not supporting. Um, a dry and dropper setup if you were to fish a dry dropper and therefore I'm tying in this little um, hot butt which is basically the egg sac of a, um, um, a mating caddis and a spent caddis just to help support my um, dry and dropper setup should I fit, decide to fish dry and dropper. The material I'm using for the tail is Antron yarn uh, in, in fresh and chartreuse and um, to ensure a compact uh, little egg sac I twist the Antron yarn in opposite directions until it twists onto itself, like so. So there I've got a antronion twisted onto itself and I'll tie that in. So either your aim is not to um, tie the antronion that it extends past the hook bend. You can extend past the hook bend slightly, trying to pull that in. So there's my antron yarn in line with the hook band. And that is uh, imitating a little egg sac on the, on the caddis adult. So I'll tie that forward. Up, and very importantly, 
uh, we want to do our tying for the abdomen up to the halfway point of the hook shank to, uh, to keep proportions uh, um, according to the fly pattern. Cut that off there. The body um, is just basically dubbed um, ice dub, which is um, in a, a green color, apple green color. You can also use caddis green uh, ice dub um, for the body of the caddis. And I'm going to dub a very small, tight noodle for the body. I leave my thread at the halfway mark where I worked it up to the halfway point of the hook shank and then I'm going to dub my body first backwards um, to create my abdomen and then I'm going to come forward with a uh, tighter dubbing loop but in not touching spirals I'm going to be doing it in open spirals and this is just to um, um, secure the abdomen and make sure that it's um, not going to unravel because on this pattern you know, I'm not using any ribbing to secure the abdomen. <clears throat> so there's your um, abdomen of your caddis pattern. I'm now going to tie in a, a wing and for the wing, um, the first wing, we're going to use, uh, I'm using um, Coastal DA um, bleached, but you can also use LK uh, for this wing, um, like you do on an LK caddis. Um, the wing, this short wing that I'm tying in now is just to support the um, foam wings, which is going to be the secondary wing um, on the pattern that we are going to be tying in. So I'm first cutting off uh, a full length of hair, and because I'm only using a very short section, I'm cutting it again shorter, like so, before I insert it into my hair stacker. So now I'm going to remove any um, short fibers or short and unruly fibers. You don't want your um, this hair wing to be too dense. It's not like your other your standard dry flies, for instance, like your LK caddis, where your wing, the, your LK wing or your deer hair wing or this coastal deer wing, is going to support the fly and um, floating it. The 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 function of this wing is just to ensure that the foam wing stays splayed um, during the, your uh, fishing of the fly. So I'm going to tie in the wings and the, the tips of the of the wing that I'm tying in are just past the hook bend because um, you, you actually want the wings uh, the tip of the wing to be in line with the hook bend but what happens is if you um, um, if you tie it in like I've done now the minute you start um, putting pressure on your tying point, the, the wings pull back a little bit and then um, the tips come in line with the hook bend. So therefore when you tie it in, measure it like you are going to tie it in just past, past the hook bend and it will automatically pull back to the correct length, which is the length of the hook bend. I'm going to snip off the, the, the fibers, the long fibers, just to a shorter length just to help me to secure the butts of the hair um, when I tie it in completely. Okay, now I'm going to secure my wing with continuous thread wraps. This will also know that my wing is not um, um, splaying all over the place. Uh, my fibers and it's um, tied in the way that I want it to sit. So as you can see the wing is very similar to uh, your standard downwing dry flies. So this is the middle wing tied in. Now just to clean up the fly we're just going to dub a small 
quantity of the abdomen green um, over the butts of the hair wing. Very sparse, don't overdo it. Done. A little, it looks a little bit unruly at this stage, but um, now we're coming to, this is basically just the filler of the, of the pattern. Um, it just fills in the, the fact that there's an abdomen and an egg sac um, on the caddis. Now we're coming to the two components which I consider to be the most important for this pattern uh, in its overall performance, and that's the foam wing and the CDC thorax. For the foam wing, I'm going to be using packaging foam. This foam you can find uh, in fruit and veg shops. Um, you get it when you buy electronics. It's the foam that, in which they are pack, packaged. Um, it's, a, it's, an, it's got air bubbles trapped in it, so it gives it great buoyancy. The, the, the width of the foam I'm going to be cutting is just slightly past the width of the um, hook gape. This is a size, size 10 hook gape. And from experience, I I know more or less the width of my foam wing. Okay, so there's my foam wing, which I cut now for the pattern. To tie it in, I'm going to just snip off uh, the corners of the front section to form a slight V, reduce the amount of foam there. And now I'm going to tie the foam to face forward over the hook eye. You want to have the foam strip um, seated on top of the hook shank. So I work my way with the foam up to the hook eye just to ensure that it's tied in, secured there slightly better. Then you've got some ex excess foam um, situated in the, uh, in the thorax area, but what you can do with your thread wraps is just um, tie over them and that'll just secure them. You do not have to be neat at, um, in the way that you tie in your foam at this uh, stage of the tie of the uh, fly tying because this is all going to be covered with CDC. So there's my foam secured to my hook shank now. The next step uh, is the CDC thorax. And what we are going to do in order to create that is I combine um, two CDC feathers. I don't want my fibers to be too long. Um, I want a few fibers longer and the balance of them to be shorter just to create the uh, um, thorax and um, an image of the body and the antenna of the caddis, which is quite straggly on the adult. So I overlay the two um, CDC feathers. Then I'm going to take uh, my bull clip and uh, put it in my bull clip and then I'm going to cut to length. Okay, so there's my feathers, uh, my feather fibers uh, secured in my bull clamp. Now I'm going to take my thread and split the thread and insert the, uh, the fiber tips into the split thread. To do the split thread I use a needle, to split the thread with a needle. And that's the nice thing about uh, this um, thread, the nano silk, that it splits very easily. So you don't need to create a dubbing loop, a uh, thread loop. Insert your Clip, release. I've got my feather fibers secured in my thread. Okay. Um, do, um, you can twist it in both ways. You can either hang it down, but what I normally do is I hold on to the thread, then I start twisting my thread. So I have a good twist in my thread before I, before I release the, the fibers to twist. So I let my thread twist while I'm holding on to my. Uh, Fiber line, uh, thread and fibers. And once I've got a good twist in it, I release it, and there your fibers twist into a, a brush of CDC. My thread at this point is um, at the towards the back of the thorax. I'm going to now work 
walk my thread forward to the hook eye and then coming back again in open spirals just to meet up with my uh, with the back of the thorax also what you can do at this stage is to just to use a i use velcro you can use your bodkin just to um, release any trap fibers and ensure that your thorax is quite scraggly there you go at this stage the um, thorax looks quite uh, scruffy and scraggly but that's the way you want to, to look you do not want the neat thorax you want a bunch of fibers that's sticking out in all directions um, and that's part of the um, appeal of the pattern it looks spent and like a cat is in distress i'm now going to tie in the foam wings but when we pull the foam back on this pattern we're not going to pull the foam back and uh, in, a, in, in, in tightly to form a, a, a secure tying in the front. I'm actually going to bubble the foam to create a little bit of space um, over the thorax and uh, in a bubble basically. And this is uh, very important because the, the bubble that I create over the CDC with the foam is um, help as part of the, um, f f uh, the flotation for the fly. So this fly has basically got like a floating device <laughs> in the thorax. Um, and then the wing supports that. So I'm going to loosely move the foam back and I'm, I'm, when I tie it in I almost push it forward a little bit and then I'm going to take my thread over the over the foam and it, when you take your thread over the foam you're also basically measuring out your your thorax and on this pattern the thorax is a little bit oversized like like there and then I'm once once I've got my thorax into position then I tighten my phone down, my, my thread down, and I secure. Now my, I've got a, I created the bubble on my, on my pattern. There's the bubble that I've created. And so I'm going to just continue with a few more thread wraps to secure it tight enough, and then I'm going to tie off my thread. So at this point, um, like with all flies, we want to secure the thread to ensure that it doesn't come loose again. Um, and for this, I'm going to use super glue, um, but I'm going to secure um, the thread on the foam where I've tied it in, because foam and super glue absolutely love each other. It sticks very well. So I'm taking my drop of super glue on my on my bodkin or my pin. I pull the wing open, and I'm just going to drop that super glue on the thread wraps in the foam and there you are secured so now your your wing secured the last step of this fly um, and it's also a tricky step is the is the wing so the wing i want to rather cut your wing longer than shorter so i'm going to start off with my wing quite long there and that's about the length of your wing you want your wing to be um fairly long it's about a third almost double the length of the hook shank um, you want your wing longer instead of shorter the, the you the wings on these scatters are very long um, that's why they're so noticeable when they do hatch or when this the caddis flight is going the mating flight so i've got my wing now cut to proportion on the length and what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut I need three wings. I'm going to cut a wing on this side, and, and there's going to be one on, on either side and one in the middle. I'm going to cut from the bottom um, up to the um, tying point, but I'm not going to cut so that my cut touches the tying point. So I'm going to cut just short of where the thread was, um, where I used my thread to tie in my thorax uh, and to finish off. Okay, so this is my first cut. Cutting it down into the close to the tine. Then I'm going to split this wing even. There you go. And there's your wings, your spent wings, and your support for the for the caddis. I'm going to put the, uh, the, the fly back in the vise. Um, 
So once you've cut your wings, then you can decide on the length. And for me, the length is pretty much, I hardly cut anything. That's about the length that you want your wings to be. Um, like I say, air on the longer side. Um, and that's the pattern, guys. It's a very, uh, it can be a very quick tie. Not a complicated dry fly pattern. Very, very effective when these uh, catters are in mating flight in the evenings and the yellows are coming up to sip them off the surface. I wanna miss.